Imagine being told you'll be spending some time in prison. It's your first time. You're certainly no hardened criminal. Hey, everyone makes mistakes, but to your surprise, prison is nothing like those shows you've seen on Netflix in which being incarcerated looks about as hospitable as a cage full of rabid dogs. On your first day there, you're invited to do a bit of skiing. On your second day, you take a dancing class, and later you watch how some of the other prisoners get paid for giving folks on the outside a massage. What really blows you away is what happens after you tell the warden that you used to work as a chef in a restaurant. He then has you cooking up $100 Wagyu steaks for the posh part of the public. Welcome to the weirdest prisons on earth. Number 8. Eating out on the inside Let's imagine you've taken a trip to the city of Cartagena in Colombia. You do what most people do when you start looking online for places to eat. On TripAdvisor, you find a restaurant called Interno, and among a lot of 5-star reviews, you see one person has written this. The food is superb, the space is lovely, and the meal is reasonably priced. You're in for one of the most unique dining experiences you can get. Below that review, you see the meal was outstanding and, in my opinion, very fairly priced. The ceviche was delicious and the steak was amazing. Ok, you think I am definitely going to this place, except you didn't read some of the finer details and when you get there, your food is cooked and served by the female inmates of the San Diego District Jail. Yeah, some of the women there have been taught to cook up high quality meals as part of a project to help them find work when they're released. One chef serving a 6 year sentence for extortion put the final touches to your beef dish. Posta Cartagenera it was then brought to you by a US native whose stay in Colombia was prolonged after she was found in the airport with a suitcase full of cocaine. She hated prison at first, saying the conditions were just awful, but things changed when she got the chance to show her skills in the restaurant. One of the people responsible for the project didn't deny Colombian prisons are a living hell, but he feels such projects can at least give prisoners some hope. He said, the prisons aren't good, and they don't treat them like human beings. I know they've made mistakes, but everyone deserves a second chance and deserves the dignity of being treated like a human being. In fact, that place is just one of a few prisons around the world that are doing the same. In Italy, you can do some fine dining at a restaurant called In Galera. That means in prison in Italian. One Google review states everyone who works at the restaurant except the manager is an inmate. Their recidivism rate is only 17% compared to Italy's 70%. Of course, not all of the 1,200 inmates get the chance to show off their culinary skills or serving acumen, but those who do are happy to do something other than look at four walls most of the day. The NGO that helped open the prison restaurant told the American news media who makes the grade, saying, We select inmates who are serving long sentences for all kinds of crimes, including robbery and murder. The only ones who can't work here are mafia affiliates. The inmates not only learn how to become top chefs, but for their work they can earn up to $1,500 a month. There's a similar thing in the UK at a restaurant called The Clink, which is operated by inmates inside HMP High Down Prison. Here's a TripAdvisor review. I thought this might be so highly rated as it's quite a novelty factor to be able to eat inside prison walls. I was totally wrong, as the food totally stands on its own as being some of the best I've experienced in London. Ok, enough of food, let's talk about something arguably even stranger. Number 7. The Quiet Life Some of you might have heard that when you're sent to prison there are dangers every day. You have to either keep your head down or you might have to join a gang or make friends fast. If you find yourself getting sent to Sark Prison in the UK, you might have a bit of a shock because it's about the safest place in the world. Sark Prison could possibly be the smallest prison in the world, with a maximum capacity of two. Yeah, you heard that right. It was built back in 1856 and back then, there wasn't much crime on that small island of Sark. Still, in 2020, a cop said the island was awash with criminality. The prison itself looks like a concrete outhouse. The interior of the cells is grim, with one bed and no windows. While the island is only home to 500 or so people, many of them get into violent drunken fights and drive while wasted. There's also a fair bit of drug trafficking happening on Sark, so the prison is needed. If someone has committed a serious offense, they'll later be shipped off to a bigger prison off the island. The next place is possibly the most appealing prison in the entire world. Number 6. Summer Camp Now we'll talk about Norway, a country that has transformed its recidivism rates in a very short period of time. Norway used to be home to tough prisons where inmates were treated not much better than cattle. But these days the country is famous for its take on humane punishment. They call it rehabilitation, a concept other countries could read a book or two on. Norway's Bastui Island prison is called the most eco-friendly prison in the world. The inmates are basically farmers growing their own food and tending to animals. They live in attractive little cottages and dine on food made by skilled chefs. To think this place used to be known as Hell on Earth, a place where an insurrection led to an army being called in. These days, inmates can go swimming, play tennis on new courts, ride horses, and even go skiing in the winter. They're taught to value the environment and learn the essential skills for living off the land. Much of Europe right now has a reoffending rate of around 70%, and Norway was similar in the past, 
Since the country's efforts to rehabilitate prisoners were put in place, the rate is now around 20%. The rate at this prison is 16%. Go figure. Would you like to get up close to hardened criminals? What about one whose hands are around your neck? This can happen at the next prison for about 6 bucks. Number 5. A Hands-On Experience When you think of Thailand in prison, what comes to mind is often corrupt officers, regular beatings, inmates packed like sardines into filthy cells, and generally nothing positive at all. But then, if you've ever heard of the cultural capital city of Chiang Mai in the north, you might find yourself being given a full-body massage by someone who once plunged a knife into someone's chest. That's because the women's prison there is home to a massage shop that caters to the public. The masseuses are all inmates and have been trained by professionals. As with the vast majority of prisoners in Thailand, they're mostly in for drug charges, although a fair few are in for more serious crimes. Now, those women have had over 300 hours of training and will give you a sublime massage for 200 baht. This was part of a travel blogger's review. She presses her stick into the tender skin between my toes, and it's a pain so exquisite that I resort to deep abdominal breathing in order to bear it. Nan giggles quietly and assures me that it'll feel better later. It's almost impossible to think of her as a hardened criminal. Now for a prison that became world famous for entertainment. We imagine you've heard of this one. Number 4. Dance Prisoner Dance Sticking with Asia, there's a prison in the Philippines where inmates are encouraged en masse to learn dancing skills. In fact, a video they made dancing to Michael Jackson's Thriller has over 59 million views on YouTube. The prison's called the Cebu Provincial Detention and Rehabilitation Center, and the dancing team, a very big team of sometimes consisting of 1,500 members in one routine, is called the CPDRC Dancing Inmates. You might wonder why they dance so much. The guy that started the program said he took inspiration from the movie The Shawshank Redemption, which portrays inmates finding some solace in Mozart's Figaro. He saw that and thought, hmm, how can I bring some sense of comradeship, some sliver of happiness to my inmates? He started off doing marches to music but then figured out that they'd be much happier dancing to songs they liked. They started with the classic Pink Floyd song, Another Brick in the Wall, although we're not sure if any irony was intended. They've since done loads of routines and earned tons of cash from donations and whatever they make from YouTube. It's been reported that prisoners can receive a little bit of the money, but human rights groups have said the prisoners are being exploited. Some say they're forced to dance and not quite as happy as the media has sometimes made them out. You also have to remember that once they go back to their cells, it's like getting a re-entry stamp back to the abyss. The next prison is so unique you could hardly call it a prison. Number 3. Village Life A couple of decades ago, a prison in Bolivia called San Pedro Prison made the headlines because it was said to be a tourist prison. No kidding, you could actually pay to stay there and hang out with the inmates. An Australian writer talked about this in his book, Marching Powder. That's a term for cocaine which was why the guy was in the prison in the first place. But get this, some 3,000 people in that prison ran it themselves. It was a community, a place where there were markets and businesses. It gets even stranger when you hear that one way a prisoner could make a ton of cash was by selling cocaine to the tourists, and this was all allowed. These days, it's still kind of a community prison. You can buy a cell in the posh part of the place for around 1500 bucks, and you will get a nice bedroom, a private shower room, a kitchen, a TV, and if you really have a lot of cash, you can then get yourself a three-level cell. That might set you back $10,000 to $30,000. Wives and children, of course, can live in the prison with the inmates. Everyone's expected to pay for a cell, so if you get one of the coffin cells, you might only have to pay 100 bucks or so. And if you don't have the cash on entry, you have to work to pay off the, uh, mortgage. Okay, so if you don't have much cash, the cells are shared and kind of cramped. But that doesn't mean you can't walk around the markets or have yourself a game of pool. You can still visit the restaurants run by prisoners, and you can still do many of the activities. This place is basically like a village, and while there are guards, they don't really enforce many rules. Since cash can be made, the wealthier inmates ensure no violence erupts. From what we can see, it doesn't. When that Australian writer was sent there, he was expecting a normal, dirty, claustrophobic prison and was surprised to see a working village. He told the BBC, I thought, what is this place? I even had to pay my own taxi fare to get there. As another person put it, they have developed rules, a political system and punishments, as well as a highly sophisticated economy. Can you imagine a prison officer handing a convicted killer a gun and telling him to use it? Listen to this. It happens. Number 2. Please, take this gun. There's a documentary about the first prison ever opened in Greenland, a place for the most dangerous people in the country. These killers and other dangerous inmates were once sent to Denmark to do their time, but now Greenland has its own high-tech place, Nianstad Prison. The inmates can hang out with officers, although one inmate interviewed was unhappy about the professionalism of that. He said back in Denmark they had proper guards with proper training. 
Still, the reason for the friendliness is because the place was designed to be a humane prison. If you find yourself there, you'll be given a nice room with modern fittings and you'll have a shared, well-equipped kitchen where you and others can rustle up some tasty food. The prisoners basically get the run of the place and there are many things to do. In that documentary we mentioned, one guy's taken out seal hunting as a way of rehabilitating him. Convicted murderers might find themselves being handed a rifle and told to hunt animals. The good thing is, they haven't shot any officers yet. Some guys even get to go into town on day release for work, which has made some locals unhappy. Since everyone knows everyone else, that prisoner might be walking among some family of someone he's killed or at least hurt. Still, there are also cells for maximum security prisoners, so a prisoner will have to earn his little bit of freedom. The views from the cells are quite amazing. The architect of this magnificent place said, you can't escape the prison because it's surrounded by a big wall, but you can look at the view and escape in your mind, and that's important. As the prisoner will also at some point be released back into very small communities, the last thing Greenland needs is prisoners coming out worse than they went in. Ok, last one and a prison you might just pay good money to stay in. Number 1. Inside the Valley of Fog Yeah, this prison is situated in a place called the Valley of Fog. That's on one of the islands that comprise the Faroe Islands, an archipelago about 200 miles off the north-northwest of Scotland, and quite a bit farther down from Iceland. When we say rugged or isolated, the pharaohs fit the bill perfectly. But of course, there's crime there. People steal, people fight, people take drugs, and occasionally people kill things other than sea life. For that reason, you have to have a prison. The prison is located on the largest and most populous island of Stramoy, not far from the town of Thorshavn. The island might be quiet, but there are still over 24,000 people that might at some point in life think about committing a crime. If they do, they'll be sent to the jail in that foggy valley, which in the local language is called Mjörskadalr. To say it's remote is an understatement. The place doesn't even have a zip code. Like no other prison in the world, it has a turf roof, so it looks like the kind of place you'd imagine that has hobbits inside. It's actually there to keep the heat in and protect the building against the elements. The prison itself can only house 12 people, and the prisoners are not exactly in a maximum security environment. A few years ago, one guy escaped, but he was picked up soon after. There aren't too many places a person can hide in Stramoy. If the crime is very serious, the inmate will be sent to prison in Denmark, but the longer stayers at Mjörskadalr at least get their own TV. And if they are good inmates, they might even get to have a round or two at the nearby mini golf course. It's about as surreal as a prison can get. And since one person said street crime is virtually non-existent on the island, it often doesn't have any residents. Now, you need to watch 50 insane facts about prison you wouldn't believe. Or have a look at this.